Welcome to We Will Do It Together Ministries. I am Michelle Franklin, and I'm so excited to be back with you guys today. We're going to have a continuance of the last show. And I want you guys to know that TV is really awesome because I was able to go to Brazil for 30 days. 30 days! And we got everything done before I had to leave, and now I get to tell you the testimonies. And it's a continuation of what my last show was about, about can't touch this. So let me open in prayer. Father God, you are so good, and the joy is bubbling forth through me, from heaven to every viewer, just laughing at the enemy and his tactics. I am so thankful for you, God. You know exactly what to do, you know exactly when to do it, and you know exactly how to do it. So I ask you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to envelop every single viewer, every person that's hearing my voice, and that you would just explode the fire and love from heaven over each and every one of them. That this word would transform every single mind, every single soul, and every single body, and their spirits would be aligned with Holy Spirit. And any spirits that are not of you, God, that they would be silenced right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you for this time to share the glory of God that happened in Brazil. And I bless each and every one of you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So welcome. Like I said, I am excited to share testimonies with you. And then my guests, my next few guests for the next few weeks, you're going to love them. You're going to absolutely love them. But I want to read the scripture, and before I read the scripture, I want you to understand that before I went to Brazil, I helped people get their plane tickets, and every one of them was $666. Now, most people are afraid of that number, but I love it, and I'll explain to you right now why. Because in Isaiah 66, 6, it says, the sound of an uproar from the city, a voice from the temple, the voice of the Lord providing retribution to his enemies, retribution to his enemies. So follow me as we read a couple more scriptures, because this is what he did when we arrived in Brazil. He turned the sea into dry land. They crossed through the river on foot. There we rejoiced in him. You can't rejoice in anybody else. If you try to rejoice in man, forget about it, because man will let you down and you'll be slithering on the floor again. But when you rejoice in God, his glory will take you to new levels. In Ephesians 2, 6, it says, He raised us up together with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. We're in him, and I could go down that road too, but we abide in him, he abides in us. That's on a whole different topic. We're staying right here on this one. And he put all things in subjection under Christ's feet and appointed him as head over all things at the church. That's Ephesians 1.22. So what's under him? Everything is subjected under Christ's feet. So where are we seated? We're seated in heavenly places with um, Jesus. And if he has everything subject under his feet, so do we, right? Oh, let me oil up because this is going to be a good word. And you guys need to, behind the ears, we're using rebuilt ruins. And it's called breaker anointing oil. It's from devastation to restoration. You can look up rebuilt ruins and order your own. So I'm just promoting my friend Matt. He was on the show not too long ago. Okay. Um, so in Hebrews 1.13, it says, Sit at my right hand together with me in royal dignity. Do you all feel that you have the royal dignity of heaven? I know that you guys have heard my testimony. It took me 36 years to get my wedding ring because I did not feel that I desired or deserved to have royal dignity on my hand. 
So last year, I finally got tired of not having my ring, and I told my husband, you need to go buy me a ring. And he paid cash for it, and he brought it home, and he, then he reproposed to me. So I now can tell you that this royal dignity is for real. So let me, let me start over again. Sit at my right hand together with me in royal dignity until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet in triumph conquest. Your enemies are a footstool for your feet. So your foot right now where it sits, it's sitting on the enemy's head. And I'm going to go down that road, but I have a couple more scriptures to read. Another defeat for the one who, by the grace of God, is under our feet. In Romans 16, 20, the, the Passion Translation says, And the God of peace will swiftly pound Satan to a pulp under your feet, and the wonderful favor of our Lord Jesus will surround you. Okay, I'll come back to that one because that's the one I want to really emphasize. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten. You know what that means? That means he, stro he, strikes, he strikes a heavy blow over your enemies. Has smitten all my enemies on the cheek. Boom! Though ha thou hast shattered the teeth of the wicked. So when he looks like he's, you have to fear the wicked, Remember that he has no teeth because Jesus has already shattered and taken out all his teeth. So he walk around like this. I know you see people that do this. It's like, surely, but he can't touch you. He cannot touch you. Okay, let's go back to um, under our feet. Hebrews 1.13. Sit at my right hand together with me in royal dignity until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet in triumph conquest. So we're in, we're in Brazil, and these guys are like under a lid. They can't get out from under the lid. They don't have any joy in their hearts. It was very, very sad. And so I'm, I'm going after these scriptures, and I'm like, where's the enemy at? He's under your feet, right? We just talked about it sit in your chair and you're watching this or on in your car we're driving down the road wherever you're watching the enemy is under your foot so i would tell them pound his head so stomp on his head and watch his head go through his bottom and watch his legs go woo i love it it makes you laugh and if you're not laughing yet go back and watch it until it makes you laugh because that's funny like when you pound, when you step on a bug, it squishes them, right? Well, you're smashing the bug of the devil, making his head go through his butt, and his legs are flying out like this. You've got to laugh because if you don't, you're going to like fade away and you're going to be depressed all the time. Laughter is what brought me out of depression. So that's why I make people laugh because it's important. To, it's important to Jesus. In Psalm 2, it says that he's in heaven laughing at us because we're funny and we take everything so seriously. So we go to Brazil. We, we spend 10 days in Fortaleza. It's beautiful there. It's 85 degrees. The beaches are beautiful. Oh, it's just amazing. Love it. It's like bathtub water in the, in the ocean. And then um, I took the next leg of the trip was in Rio de Janeiro for 17 days. So in Fortaleza, we, we, we were busy every single day. Every single day we had something to do. On a, one of the Sundays we were there, we had four churches that different people ministered at in the, in the morning and three in the evening. So you can tell we were very busy. We had a conference that we had. It was called um, Open Heavens. And they, um, we had deliverance teaching for two sessions. I did that one, and that was fabulous. And I'm going to tell you some stories from that. We had prophetic teaching. That was on a Friday night and a Saturday. For, that was three sessions. A healing uh, minister was three sessions. And then Sozo with Stan Don, who takes us, he's the, he, he orchestrates all this with our uh, fearless interpreters in Brazil, Maria and Julio, and they do a fabulous job keeping us busy 
for the whole time we're there and seeing signs, miracles, and wonders and savings. We, we saw, I think I heard we, we saw more than 7,000 people get saved, healed, and delivered. That's incredible for 10 days. <laughs> That was incredible. And there could have been more, you know, but 7,000, that's a lot. I know that in, um, when I spoke on one of the occasions at a big church, I had 750 people in, I think it was running online. So just in the sanctuary, there were 750 people. That was, in, in, that was intense. Okay, so let's go back to the deliverance. Um, so we... It didn't, I, I had notes, you know, like I get notes here and I don't, sometimes I follow them, sometimes I don't. But the notes uh, in Brazil, I did not follow. The Lord led me in a whole different way. And he's shown me, I talked about the hiding place that a lot of us, since we were kids, we had to hide because the traumas and the disasters that would happen around us in our in our childhood we didn't know how to we didn't understand it and so we had to find a place that we felt that we could protect ourselves because we didn't know Jesus like um, like you probably do now hopefully and if you don't then he wants to know you so you really want to say yes to Jesus and invite him into come into your heart because it's in, it's important like, I would not be who I am or doing this TV show right now if I wouldn't have said yes to Jesus so many years ago. So, <clears throat> um, so we're doing the deliverance class, and I'm pulling people out of the hiding place just by talking in the front. And I have one of my people that's in the audience with me. Uh, I noticed this lady. She needed extra help. And so she took her outside, and it turned out that she was seeing the hook come after her in the womb. The hook. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Her mother was trying to take her life in the womb, but didn't succeed. And so she's still alive, and she was older than me. So she, my friend helped her come out of that place, out of that hiding place, out of that traumatic event in her life. She had been um, seen a psychiatrist for 25 years and was on five drugs, and three of them were sleeping pills because she couldn't sleep at night. She went home that night, she took her three pills, she slept for three days because she didn't need the pills anymore. She went back to the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist says, you don't need my help anymore, you have been set free. I don't know how you did that, but you are free from all of that. And so she made about, I think there was 18 of us women on the trip, there was a total of 23 that went. There was 18 of us that she handmade aprons. I should have brought one to show you but she made us all a, an apron so we could start cooking for our husbands if we're married, right? I haven't started yet, so. <laughs> but the, just how delighted she was to be free from that trauma that she had no idea that she was living with in the womb. God wants to set each and every one of you free. Retribution to his enemies. He wants your enemies under your feet and he wants you to stomp on them. And a lot of you guys don't know what that retribution looks like. So we go in and we talk to Jesus and he guides and directs and brings you out of this place that you didn't even know was there. I'm going to fast forward to Fortaleza. It was my third to last sozo that I did, and I had another one that had happened the same thing. Her mother never told her. She had no idea, but the spirit of death was all over her. We had taken her back before the creation, before your sperm and your egg come together. God's already picked you out. He's already picked your sperm, and he's picked your egg. And out of 160 billion spermies, he puts you in the, the, the thing, in the stream, and you are the winner of the race. Receive that, that you're a winner and you're a champion. Even if you never felt like that before, I'm telling you, before you even conceived, you, he already handpicked your sperm to make who you are. So I take this gal back to that place, and I said, Jesus, is she ready to go in the womb? And he, he puts her in the womb, and she goes right back to being before she was put in the womb. 
she couldn't go there because she didn't know what was going on. She did not have an understanding of what she was starting to go through, but she knew there was something wrong with her, but she didn't understand it. And so even after breaking the spirit of death off of her, we couldn't get her released. And I said, Jesus, because he gave me the awareness from the Fortaleza lady, did her mom try not to try to take her life when she was first conceived? And sure enough, I said, and, and when Jesus put her back in the womb, it was like she was holding his hand and she was on a, a roller coaster ride getting through that process of being in the womb, in her mother's womb. And at first, she didn't want to face it because the fear. Now, the, I tell you this story because the enemy is under your feet right now. And if any of you are feeling something's not right in your life, I got people coming on the show that you can call, even me. You can email me. We can connect. We will do it together at gmail.com. And, or we will do it together, ministry with a Y, at gmail.com because God wants to set you free. And so she's like this, and you can see she's totally holding on for dear life to Jesus, and he's guiding her through. She spittles on the floor He because she said, I feel like I'm going to throw up. I said, I don't do throw up, so de devil, shut it down. She spittles on the floor. It was only this much spittle. That's all death had on her. I said, they can't touch you. We just need to get you. You need to face it. We're going to bring you through it, and you're going to get to the other side. After we got all finished, she met the Father, she met the Son, and she's met the Holy Spirit, and she is free today. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's go back to Fortaleza. So back to the deliverance class. So my gal that helped the, the first lady that was saw the hook coming after her, we're getting ready to go to lunch, and she drops to her knees, and she's like, what the heck? It was a spirit of death that walked by her. And this young lady, she didn't even know that um, she had it on her. She didn't feel it. You don't feel this stuff. You just need somebody to come bring it off of you. So I called her back and I said, there's a spirit on you that we want to break off of you. And so she said, okay. And it turned out that her father had deposited it because he had tried to commit suicide for many years. And so we broke that thing off of her and she was free to go. And she had new life in her. Like that's all it takes. This is what God was doing all the time we were in Brazil. So then I get to um, speak on stage that night. So I had, I, I taught two classes that day and then I had to speak at a, this is my first time speaking on stage like for a length of time ever and teaching big classes. It was, it was pretty phenomenal what God's doing right now. It's really fun. But if I wouldn't have said yes, that wouldn't have happened. And so I go and I'm, I'm um, ministering with a gal named Danny Jo. Now her testimony is undone. It's undone. I'm not going to go into her testimony right now, but her mother, well, I'll just say her mother took her when she was six years old after leaving her at two years old and began to prostitute her out for drugs. So you can tell that her life was jacked up for a long time. And we were getting on stage as mother and daughter because a lot of uh, people out there, their relationships with their kids are not good and God wants to bring retribution to his enemies and bring them back forth. So she had had abortions also. So she told her story about her abortion. And I was up there as the mom saying, you know, I didn't do the right things. And then she gets up and says what her mom did. And then she ended up having abortions. So we had a couple people come up and ask for prayer for abortions. And one gal, she didn't want to let it out of the, a lot of you guys, you don't want to let it out because it's so traumatic to your, your, your soul. And, and you know that it just didn't, it's not sitting well. And God wants you to go to somebody, whether you come to me or my next couple of guests, to help them walk you through that because there is freedom from taking a life. 
It's in the Ten Commandments. If it's in the Ten Commandments, God, he sent Jesus to the cross to save us, to set us free from all the sin that has ever come through our life. And he did it 2,000 years ago. And he knew 2,000 years ago that you would be watching this show so that you could get your freedom. That's right. He wants you to be free. So this young lady didn't want to let it out, but she did. And she got her freedom, and now she's free to go forth. This stuff is real. And the enemy has had us do bad things in our lives. And we didn't know it was him. We thought it was us. It wasn't us. But we had to survive. And now God wants to raise you out of that survival mode into the ability to trust him. So that was that night. <laughs> Then, a couple days later, now this is only my testimonies, but we have many more testimonies from 23, 22 other people that went on that trip. In fact, uh, let me tell you this one. So Stan delivers this, this young lady in his Sozo class, and I ended up with her and a couple other people to re-deliver her and take her out of that hiding place. And so here I'm, I'm doing three people at once. I got my interpreter that's interpreting. I had already done the gal that knew the other two, three ladies that we were going after. Um, and she got her freedom. And then, uh, and I had already delivered this one, but she came, she was sitting there and she starts manifesting when I'm talking to these other two ladies. And I'm like, I got three people manifesting in front of me. It was pretty intense, but we took care of it. God is good and he set them free and they all got, they all got their freedom. And they all had their, their deals going on in life. The things that they had done that weren't good and God set them free that day. I tell you these testimonies because the enemy is under your foot. And God wants retribution to his enemies. That is what we did in Brazil. We get to Fortaleza and, um, not Fortaleza, and we got to Rio. And in, we did a conference over there also. And then we, I had three days where I did four sozos a day. By the end of the, that three days, I was on fire. I'd been doing their crack coffee, morning, then when I got to church, then when I went to lunch, and then when I went to dinner for three days in a row. I'm like, so I'm, they got little espresso cups that you drink. And by the third day, I'm walking around going like, I'm on crack right now, but it was coffee. <laughs> I'm making you laugh because you gotta laugh in the midst of this that's going on. There was only four of us that went to Rio. Um, COVID broke out at the church. COVID broke out at the church. And so we had to stop doing any ministry after, I think it was the first week we were there. We were good. It was the second week we were there. It, we had to shut down the church. And Pastor Rob, he ended up getting positive for COVID. And stayed, he had to stay an extra couple of days in, in Rio. He didn't leave, when, actually, a week and a half extra because he, um, he was supposed to leave on the 23rd and didn't leave on the 23rd. So that was pretty interesting. So the whole thing was just, it was, it was eye-opening. It was revelational. It was freedom for God's people, and I made a lot of new friends. And that in itself was really an awesome part. So when we first got to Rio, I got up on stage and just introduced myself really quick. And I, like, I wasn't up for more than three to five minutes speaking a little bit about me. And this gal, I get off the stage and she comes up to me and she goes, I wanna give you this. And she hands this to me. She says, I want, I see your heart is so pure. I said, that is crazy. I'm talking to the Lord right now. Lord, that is crazy because you know how blocked up my heart's been all of these years. And you set me free. And now the people can see it. That is the power of our God when you put the enemy under your foot. This one came from Fortaleza at Iris Fortaleza Ministries. 
And this gal, we administered to her the last couple of years, and she saw the, the, what I do for people. And it's not about me. It's about what Jesus does, right? But it's the freedom. And she says, you're making people sparkle all over Fortaleza. And she bought this for my birthday. Like, you can't make this stuff up. It's crazy what God's doing right now. So, all of that to say, do you want Jesus in your heart first? Because you really need to say yes to him first. He came to show us signs, miracles, and wonders. And I saw signs, miracles, and wonders in Brazil. And now he wants to, you to be a sign, miracle, and a wonder. And he wants you to go out and see sign, miracles, and wonders. So if you want that, just repeat after me. Jesus, I believe that what Michelle is saying right now is truth. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I receive your forgiveness. And I ask you to come into my heart and to bless me beyond measure, the way Michelle is talking about. Now repeat this. Put your hand on your heart and say, Holy Spirit, I invite you in to come to fill me with your love and your fire from heaven because I am precious to Jesus and Jesus is precious to me. And I want you, Holy Spirit and Jesus, to light my fire and to take me to new levels that I never, ever expected to go. Lord Jesus, thank you for being my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, thank you for coming and taking up residence in me. Now begin to speak in your heavenly language. Fire from heaven fall right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for hearing my stories. You're going to love my next guest. And I've talked about her on the Betrayal movie, uh, movie show. And we're going to talk about Betrayal and we're going to knock that thing off. So make sure that you stay tuned for the next show. God bless you. And we will see you soon. In Jesus' name, amen.